hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> So, I don't know when that clicked off then, so you might you might have missed a bit. So, Cam, do me a favour and put that spinning porky thing on, I like that. You know when we get to a stage in filming where the video, the, the battery goes, or it comes to end at 30 minutes and that spinning thing comes on. So, because the people have got helping me at the moment uh, from the film and TV industry. So, everything's going good. We've got, we've got proper people behind me, but... Getting back to what I was speaking about there, about Dillian White. Dillian White, right? He's not back. Ortiz twice, Brazil, Poole left the purse bid, because the purse bid were between White won it and Poole left, and Poole left's team won it. I spent some time with them in Bulgaria, and I, I know what was going on behind the scenes, and Dillian White could have gone out to fight Poole left, and he were probably told it in pay-per-view that or stay in England and have a pay-per-view now Dillian who is he fighting? I mean I've been told they're going to wheel Chisora out against Dillian White that's what I've been told Chisora, Dillian White, Trilogy, pay-per-view that's what I'm hearing I got it right about Povetkin though, I didn't have months ago and you all said Porky you're a hater you're a hater Porky, you're jealous you're bitter <coughs> Just telling it straight, Anna. Keeping it real. Shout out to at Highfield Boxing on Twitter. Shout out to at Lead underscore Right Twitter. Highfield Boxing videos are good. No, I'm not a hater, but I'm seeing Chisora from Zimbabwe. Usek is he Ukraine or Russian? I'm seeing them on a Sky pay per view. One sad in his second fight as a heavyweight. The other one has got nine losses, but yet it's pay per view all of a sudden. So, do you know what I mean? I've got no internet all of a sudden. So, what what can you do? It's just one of them things, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? But don't tell me, do not tell me that. that Chisora against Usek's pay-per-view. Usek's a great fighter and they'll wheel out Tony Bellew as a pundit because Tony Bellew sparred with Chisora and he got iced by Usek. Ice, ice, baby. Da, 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 iced. Tony got iced and do you know what? I was glad that he got home safe to his family but he got iced by Usek. And he knew we were going to get iced, didn't he? So, that's just how it goes sometimes. But don't tell me that Usek and Chisora's pay-per-view. But it is. But after Chisora loses to Usek, what will happen then is, Dillian White and, obviously, Chisora, they'll fight a trilogy. If Dillian White loses to Povetkin, he'll still get another pay-per-view fight. The Joshua fight's always going to be there. Now, if Dillian keeps this run going... See, this is what I'm worried about. Because I think Dillian White beats Chisora. I think he beats him comfortably. Uh, sorry. I think Dillian White beats Chisora. I think Chisora's got no left. But I also think Dillian White's a favourite against Joshua. Now, people might think, Ah, oh, Porky, you're crazy. You're just making it up as you go along. Can't take it no more, Porky. Dillian White is a favourite against Joshua, but when he's going to get that fight, he'll want to get it when it looks like he could be done at pay-per-view fighting the other guys. So if Dillian takes a loss in a pay-per-view fight, he will be begging for that Joshua fight, and he'll take it then. Because I think that fight's always going to be there, because it's one each, isn't it? So he's just playing the game, he's just managing his career. Money-wise, he's doing the best things, but don't come on... IFL, Matchroom Boxing and Sky Sport Platforms don't do it Dillian and your brother as well, he's coming out saying the same thing, the narrative they've got it off to a tee 
Don't come out telling us that nobody wants to fight you, Dillian. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? Ortiz twice, Brazil, Pulev, Joshua fight at Wembley, all knocked back, and Ruiz. That's six fights. Six fights. Ortiz twice, Pulev, Brazil, Joshua, Ruiz. Six fights. The Chisora trilogy is always going to be there. The Parker rematch is always there. That's what Higgins is telling people. So that's two more fights after Povetkin. And they might even do a Povetkin rematch if it's a close and Dillian gets dropped. So Parker, they could even have two more with Parker. So let's say they have two more with Parker trilogy, Chisora, and a one, two, three trilogy with Povetkin. Dillian could have six more pay-per-views, that would be 11. And then go for Joshua, and that would be a trilogy with Joshua because he fought him in amateurs. So it's just a case of prolonging it, prolonging it and keep them pay-per-view numbers coming in. It's a business. I know it's a cliche, but it's a business, but don't tell me that nobody no wants to fight you, Dillian, and you're all scared. I don't think Dillian's scared of any of them. He's playing the game, but it's overcooked now. There's too many cooks in the kitchen and it's spoiled the broth. The broth, at the moment, is overcooked and I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it no more about nobody wants to fight him and they're all scared of him. It, it, it's not true. It's not true at all. Do you know what I mean? It's not true. Right? Gillian White's got one of the most devastating left hook that I've ever seen. But... When have we seen him do that against top guys? When have we seen him drop a top guy? I mean, a top, top guy. He could have got Joshua when Ruiz got him. And he'll be kicking his send with that now. He'll be kicking his send. But the man love for Joshua now from Dillian is unbelievable. The man love is unreal. Because it's a game, isn't it? And these people, they're all acting. It's all a game. Shakespeare said life's all a game. Look. It's not real life. It's not. This is not real scenarios. But what, what you're dealing with, it's a sport like no other. It's like the wild, wild west. You know, it's it's kill or be killed, isn't it? But that really gets my goat at the moment. That gets me. It really does when I see these people coming out. See how how it works is this. People want to get on a platform that does numbers, but these people that are doing numbers are cheating. They are cheating. Cheating. I can cheat if I want. It's very easy. I just pick up that. I make a phone call and I throw a few quid at somebody and, and we cheat. But I don't need to because I'm not bothered about casuals. I've got the I've got the attention, let's just say, of people in the boxing industry. Yeah, you people who are watching, you know, because I get to hear things. You people in the industry that are watching my channel, I've got your attention. You bet I have. Oh, I know. We've heard back. So I've got your attention and that's all I want. Because you people are my peers. And that's all I'm bothered about. I'm not bothered about Fred Bloggs who, who, who watches six pay-per-views a year on Sky, never been to a show in his life, and thinks that Anthony Joshua is better than Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson and George Foreman and Ron Lyle rolled into one. I'm not bothered about him, the guy who lives at the bottom of the street, works in a factory and he's a Sky Sports subscriber. He's a casual. No, in fact, he's a super casual. No, in fact, he's not a super casual. He's a gimp from Gimpville Island. This little island that Eddie Hearn discovered like Christopher Columbus. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just bothered about people in the boxing industry, like you. Watching it on your phone in gym. Oh, look at that. Look what he's done now. Because I've heard back. <laughs> it tickles me that. I think it's good. But at least in some gyms down south, they get me up on big screen and watch it while they're having a jacket tatey. Look, it's not real. But I'm just calling the bull, the bull S-H-I-T out. I'm calling it out. And it needs to be called out because nobody dares say anything. There's only me. There's only me, maybe Ultra Tech Sports Bro, but he's behind camera. UC TV Boxing. That's a great channel. And he knows his stuff. But he's behind camera as well. And do you know what? 
I can understand why with some of the stuff I have to go through, but maybe I've got a death wish, who knows? I'm not really bothered. We're all gonna go one day, but let's go doing something we love. But I don't like bull. I don't I hear enough of it when I'm in jail. Everybody drives a Porsche who's in jail, don't don't they? You meet them out here and they're on Skid Row and a Ford Escort. Look, I don't wanna hear bull. S H I T I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. I don't suffer fools gladly, but I wanna be in here five years if I talk crap. Just tell it straight. All then wants around him are people who are honest and genuine and loyal. You can have what you want. Look at Clinton. Area belt, British Commonwealth European World Champion, won every belt he went for. Every belt that he went for, he won. Millionaire. Done well, hasn't he? From beginning to end, that's a great story, isn't it? And do you know what? I didn't realise till I analysed that era that Clinton fought in, till Terry Chapman Armour pointed it out to me. He said, you know what? That era he fought in was fantastic. And I had a look. What a great era. Great, great era. Terry's right, and he's a bit of a Clinton fanboy. But Clinton listens to his channel as well. But Terry was bang on. Bang on. That era that Clinton Woods fought in were brilliant and he got the fights. But he stayed loyal to Dennis, didn't he, from day one to end. And I think that was great. And do you know Carl Frock, if he'd have done that with Mick Hennessy, I'd be camped on his lawn now. I, I would love him even more than I already love him. I would. But he went to edit in and I couldn't understand that because money does things to you. You know when you're winning world titles, you want all the trimmings that comes with it, all the commercial stuff and the magazine deals and this and that, and if you're not getting it with one promoter, I can understand that, but Mick Hennessy does what it says on tin, he's a boxing promoter isn't he, that's what he does, he does what it says on tin, he's a good bloke as well Mick, I like him, never done no bad to me, but he does what it says on tin, he does did what it said on tin with Tyson Fury didn't he, he won the clean sweep just like Clinton, but when he got to world level, I think Tyson would have English, British, Commonwealth, Irish, European, world title, and he won all the world title belts in the ring magazine. He's only got the WBC belt missing. And maybe he should have had that against Wilde the first time. But maybe he might correct that, you know, next week. So we're going to see, aren't we? Week this Saturday. It's fight week this Monday, so it's all good, isn't it? It's all good, positive stuff. But like I said, I don't want to hear bullshit. Sorry for swearing. I don't want to see it in my emails as well, so any emails that come to me that are negative, they don't usually get to me, they get intercepted. I'm not saying I'm a company man or anything like that, but I don't want to see it. So, but it's all good positive stuff, isn't it? It's all good positive stuff. But like I've said, I don't want to hear you any rubbish. But now, the people that are. Uh, I've spoke to it the last couple of days about the weapons of the week thing. The weapon of the week, right? Hmm. Weapon of the week is picked by me, so it's no good voting for it. You can give me your opinion who you think it should be, but weapon of the week is from me, all right? Helmets of the month is from you people. So I just want to clear that up. Helmets of the month, weapon of the week, and the boxing royalty, they're all from me. Them titles are from me. All the other titles from now on are no to do with me. I do the filming and then it's out my hands. All the writing underneath, the pictures and all that. It's no to do with me. But boxing royalty, my boxing royalty collection, the helmets and the weapon of the week, they're my little babies. So I think that's about it. We've covered a lot of stuff. We've spoke about the outlaw returns buzzing when Josh fights next week and well I'm proud to say that Mick Wales said I'm part of Team Wales, isn't that good? Eh? I think Glyn Rhodes will be saying that about Tommy Frank to me <laughs> Will the heck? Tommy don't like me, do you Tommy? What can I do? I mean, I just get an opinion I thought he got beat, didn't I? Well that's negative talking about that There'll be times where Tommy Tommy wins and he might get he might get robbed. It's just boxing, isn't it? 
you know, people shouldn't take things to art. That's all, but does it bother me? Yeah, I get death threats every day, so that don't bother me. But I just want Josh to do well. I want all the fighters on here to do well. Uh, it's all good, positive stuff. I like Keenan Wayne, right? He's an hard trainer. So all right, dig on him. Uh, one kid I noticed that's not on the show, Kane. Very quiet, Kane Salvin. I want you to follow him on Twitter. He's a very quiet kid. Uh, but he's very, very destructive on the inside. I watched him. I watched him in the gym. He's very, very quiet. Very quiet. But I think he'll go all the way in. I think he'll go all the way. All the way. But we're going to see. But they're in a good, they're in a good gym. We have Glyn Rhodes, MBE. He knows his stuff. It's... Uh, Exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much. Rough, tough, rugged. Get them people out of that basement. That's what I say. It's. Uh, I want to give a thank you to Raymondo from Hartlepool. I notice you keep leaving uh, Texas. Is it Texas on YouTube? You keep leaving Texas on there. The gentleman from Australia, Boxing Monkey. Uh, we will, I will get you on another time. There's other people wanting to come on because these phoning things, that's another baby of mine. These are taking off now. These are fans ringing in. Uh, the boxing fans ringing in and they want to get things off the chest and talk about things related to boxing. What they're unhappy with, what they are happy with. But I don't want this channel just to be about the negative stuff. I want it to be about positive stuff as well. There's obviously a lot of things that we are unhappy about in boxing at the moment. Mainly pay-per-view, 25 quid. It used to be 15 quid. Mainly that. I think that's a big issue. YouTubers on YouTube or YouTube stars never boxed in their life. They jump in the queue and you, to get ed, to headline shows and they're putting world champions like Billy Joe on undercard. That's a problem because Eddie Earn said that because these people are coming into the sport, the sport will grow. Well, I don't think that's true because I've been looking at some numbers related to that on the analytics and on the computer and that's not true. So I think that's a lie from Eddie. I think they're just doing it to get subscriptions for Dazon. I think they're in big trouble, Dazon. They can't keep throwing money at the job like this. Have you noticed they're all squabbling now about purses and stuff like that? They're not throwing big money about no more like they were. So, a lot of people are unhappy with that. A lot of people are unhappy with StubHub, the secondary market, secondary ticket market. A lot of people are unhappy with Billy Joe Saunders' career, where it's going with Eddie Hearn. Callum Smith's career, where is that going? They're unhappy with Dillian, White, Dillian White's career. Where is that going? You know, there's little little things like that that people spot. I mean, Eddie Hearn's not Superman. He might think that he is, but he's not. All right? Now, this man makes mistakes, but when you've got a platform to say a bit and drown everybody else out on this platform, nobody seems to go against the grain. They all think it's gospel. It is not... Got an itchy nose. It's not gospel if it were raining outside and i said eddie what's weather like outside if he said it were raining i would still get up and check because i don't believe a word that he says i think he's a compulsive liar he's a compulsive liar but he can put spin on things like mr bean he can spin things how he wants he's got that microphone in his hand on sky he can spin that whichever way he wants. Do you understand? Now it's up to you, the fans, to take on board what these people are telling you. It's a bit like with Tyson Fury, isn't it? I give seven million to charity. I'm gonna knock Wilder out in two rounds. I'm only gonna fight Joshua in America. But didn't he say we're gonna fight him in Old Trafford? Does that much get spun on a daily basis, so? What I'm trying to say is don't believe it, it's done for effect. It doesn't mean that these people are liars in real life. They're just trying to, they're involved in like this movie called Boxing and everybody's playing their little part. 
and I'm just calling them out on it. That's all it is. Don't take it too serious. Don't take it to heart. It's just boxing. It's just how it is. It's made a lot difficult these days with social media because people who have probably not got a belt and not won a belt, only belt they've got is a snake belt all in the tracky bottoms up. But yeah, these people can have massive followings and they can manipulate the system. All right? Don't be fooled by it, all right? But what you should do is go with your own instincts, all right? If you think somebody's not telling the truth, go with what you think, all right? Or oh, just ask me. Send me an email and ask me. Ask Porky. Hashtag ask Porky. Ask me. Ask me. It's not hard. Send me an email, ask me, and I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you if it's rubbish or if it isn't. Alright? Most of the time I usually prove correct. Alright? But as regards Tyson Fury Wilder, will I be jacking the channel in? Well, I might have to do. I might have to keep my word. I might have to pack it in. If Tyson Fury fights Wilder, but you're not fought him yet, has he? So we're going to see. We will see, but it's all exciting and it's all looking good. Which brings me to what's happening with one of my top 10 favourite fighters at the moment, Martin J. Ward. Now, as you notice, at the weekend, every single home fighter won on Eddie Hearn's Sheffield show. All the home fighters won. What does that say? Does that say that there were 50-50 fights or not? Maybe somewhere. Terry Harper's were a 50-50, I thought. Uh, the others, I don't know. You've got to bring kids on, but every, all the own fighters won. So that's a good thing for area, isn't it? That's a good thing for Sheffield, that all the own fighters won. Beefy Smith turned up to play his part in this little film. He turned up because he wants to fight Kel. So Eddie, what happens is Eddie rings up Beefy. Good at show. Uh, the tickets left on gate for you. Bring bring a guest, and uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll get Sky to interview you in middle at fight and after at fight or before middle and after, and just call Kel out and just say you're there for the fight. That's how things are put into motion. As simple as that. Uh, as soon as everybody's seen Beefy Smith there, they all know that it's him and Kel at 154. Now Liam as a big middleweight so he's going to be a massive light middle so I think he's got a sized advantage over Kel Brook is he a technically better boxer than Kel Brook? No we don't know what Kel Brook's got left in tanky we're over 15 stone one in not long ago when Fuki were training him so maybe Fuki couldn't get weight off him I don't know I don't know what went on I love Fuki to death he's a pal of mine he's Dennis's head trainer at our gym I like him I like his family his little boy and my little boy have got the same name, Reggie. But should Keller start with Fuki? That's between them, isn't it? But he got the weight off with Dominic, didn't he? I don't know what happened with him with Fuki, but he never lost a fight with Fuki. They won, didn't they? And let me tell you this, that kid that he beat, that Serafa, he beat Jeff Horn, who beat Manny Pacquiao. So that was a good win, and everybody were giving Keller an hard time over that fight. He got the job done, the kid was a good kid. A world-ranked fighter. So, but does Beefy Smith beat Kel Brook? It's a pick and fight, but I'm going to go for Liam Smith on points in a life and death. I just think he out toughs Kel, and I think Kel's got a little bit more, had a little bit more damage to him. Take the, spent, uh, take the Golovkin fight out of Kel Brook. Kel Brook's a massive favourite against Beefy Smith, but I think when Kel Golovkin beat Kel Brook, he took some out of him. Bit like Clinton Woods after his third fight with Glenn Johnson. He won't say him after that fight. Neither will Glenn. And I think Kel Brook, after Golovkin, Golovkin set about him, fair enough they threw towel in, didn't they? But I think after that fight, I think Kel was never, has never been the same fighter. So, and that's what suicidal kamikaze matchmaking can do for a fighter. You don't put welterweights in with middleweights, do you? Well to eight is he, yeah? Ten stone seven. Kel's fighting at eleven stone now, light middle or super welter. 
you go to middle, 13 pound, it's an hard jump as it is, but when it's against an undefeated Iceman, who's got the joint record for middleweight defences, when you're fighting an Iceman, like Golovkin, come on, two weight divisions and it's a killer, and your best win up to then who? who were Kel Brook's best win up to that? Is squeaked by Sean Porter. What would happen if Al Heyman put Sean Porter then at that time in with Golovkin? What would happen? What would we all say? Eh? What would we all say? We'd all say it's craziness, wouldn't we? Utter craziness. You know what I mean? Would Floyd Mayweather fight Golovkin? No. Would Sean Porter? No. Would Manny Pacquiao? No. Paulie Malignaggi, former two-weight world champion, welterweight world champion. What about if Paulie fought Golovkin? Oh my God, we'd all say it's a lamb to slaughter. Well, Kel would have welterweight as well, wouldn't he? I've been down this road before. It drives me mad, that fight. It drives me mad. Kel, you're a beast, you're a beast. You, you really are like heavyweight. Oh my God. Just the same as Eddie Hearn sat in the sauna with Lee Purdy. He don't get it. We have weight divisions for a reason. Fighters are not superheroes, alright? Peace out, keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing, shout out to my two sponsors. Alright, AJ, I hope you're well mate. You take care. You like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PorkyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>